be seated wow you could sense the energy the excitement and I just want you to settle down for 20 something minutes how many of you are excited to watch our kids amen our young people and some uh, people that I asked to render us a special Christmas music uh, the ushers could now close the the main uh, door if you could uh, help me out thank you amen well today i just want to share a short message of christmas but i want you to participate with me amen how many of you are still finding the perfect gift for this christmas amen i i in my house my gosh all of the christmas the christmas tree under the under under the christmas tree it's filled with gifts i check my wife she, she fill it up and i'm looking for my name <laughs> i have no gift for you para pa pam pam i was looking for my name oh my god there's no james in here well it's not my birthday right but most of us are finding the perfect gift that's why this christmas i ask you Let's find the real gift of Christmas. It's finding Jesus, amen? Finding Jesus in the mess of this Christmas. You know, Christmas could be a very messy time. Try, just try going to the mall. Just try going to, uh, the, uh, the freeway. It's a very messy time when people are, are rude. It's the mood, fighting for parking spot, and sometimes it gets messy. How many of you have seen Finding Nemo? Show of hands, Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo, come on, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, Finding Dory. In the Philippines, Finding Ninong, Finding Ninong. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, right? If you are a Ninong, get ready. The kids will be lining up, bless your hand, and then expecting money po. So this is just part of our tradition but good news everybody say good news it's Christmas everybody say good news and great joy say it again good news and great joy now let me tell you what's the difference about good news and great joy good news and great joy well here's the difference good news your company did well there's no layoff coming 2020 and it becomes great joy all of you will get a bonus amen do you see the difference good news becomes great joy when it becomes personal when it happened to you good news seahawks fans we are in the playoffs come on somebody good news last week the 49ers lost and the rams so we are having this kind of jubilation amen have you noticed not all of you are clapping because i prove a point to some is good news to others not great joy Especially for the Steeler fans and the Philadelphia Eagles fans and the Washington Redskins fans. Why? I don't care about the Seahawks. Because <laughs> it's not your team. That's why it's not a great joy for you. But somebody might ask me, PJ, is there really a good news that is great joy for all people? What do you think, Charisma? Is there a good news of great joy for all people? Yeah. Everybody say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Merry Christmas! That is the good news, and it's great joy, because it's not just for one team, it's for the whole world. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's for all people. 
I want to take your attention. Let me explain to you what I'm going to play from the screen. Did you know, because nowadays we have Alexa, we have Siri, everything is voice activated. How many of you know before radio was invented not for voice or music, radio transmitter was invented as a Morse code? Remember back in the day? You remember that day? At the end, don't say yes, okay. <laughs> when people are only using radio to then they get their message through the via Morse code. Do you know when radio was first played with music and voice? It was 1906. If you're a history student, 1906, December 24, there was this breakthrough of the century. For the first time, there will be music and there will be a voice over the radio. So the whole world was tuned into the radio. The Navy is out sea in the Mediterranean all the way to the Pacific Ocean. They are tuned into the radio because for the first time, we're going to hear a music and a voice in the radio. This is the first recorded music and voice over the radio, 1906. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Merry Christmas to all. We will be repeating this program next week at the same time on New Year's Eve. Wow, that was the first ever voice recorded. It's about the good news of great joy for all people. Amen, somebody. This is the good news of great joy that all people have been waiting for. And it was the first mention in this radio broadcasting. And when the Reginald Fessenden was interviewed, said, what are you going to say? What are you going to read? What news are you going to share? He said, I'm going to read Luke chapter 2, 10 and 11. That is the greatest news ever. Amen, somebody. Well, as most of you know, we have the nativity scene here at uh, the stage. And this is the nativity scene that most of you are familiar with. We have the, the three kings. The Bible did not mention how many were there, but according to tradition, three kings or the wise men. We have, of course, Papa Joe, Mama Mary, and uh, the shepherd boy, and the cows, and the goats. And it's, it's okay, it's okay. But if you are going to be true to the Bible, there's something wrong with this picture. Because the wise men arrived when Jesus was already in the house. So Jesus was already a toddler. The original Christmas, we just been to Bethlehem a few weeks ago. We saw a cave. And I like what Pastor Milita said. When we were inside that cave and the tour guide was saying, it's one of those caves that Jesus was born. And he said, what? My Savior? That's what Pastor Milius alluded to last Thursday. Born in a cave. And Rembrandt got this depiction. It's a lonely Christmas. There were no wise men. There were no kings. There were no shepherds. It's just Mary and Joseph. And together with a few sheep and goats, born in a feeding trough. During that day, Moses and Mary almost divorced. And they went to Bethlehem to pay their tax. How many of you are so excited during tax season? Come on, raise your hands. Right? Oh my gosh, I get to pay my tax. No, you hate that day, right? 
And I'm sure this couple felt that way. We have to travel from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem because we cannot file online. We have to be there to file our own tax because there's a foreign dictator, Caesar Augustus, who wants to tax the whole world. They were homeless, church. There was no room for them in the inn. They were homeless. Baby was born in a trough. Well, you know what's a trough? It's a feeding trough where they fed the animals. And this baby was hunted by an evil King Herod. That's why this baby had to escape Egypt. He has to flee for survival. He was a refugee. So if you feel that your per the Christmas is not perfect this year, someone is missing, you got laid off, someone is in the hospital, or someone is sick in the family, or there's some relational problems you're going through today. Good news, charisma. That's what Christmas is all about. Because Christmas is not about perfection. But God using imperfect people for his perfect plan. Come on, somebody, read this with me, Charisma. Char Christmas is not about perfection, but God using imperfect people. How many of you are so thankful God chose imperfect people? Amen, Amen somebody. How many of you are thanking God because I'm in? Amen? God can use me. Come on, somebody. Amen? So I want you to see the family tree of Jesus. And I will explain this to you first so you will understand where I'm, going, where I'm coming from. When I was at Bible school in the seminary, my hermeneutics uh, professor told me, there are two things you need to avoid when you're preaching. Because this is the hardest. When you talk about something very familiar, people will not listen. You know, sometimes, oh, Christmas story. I know that story. Oh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. I even saw that at watching football. Oh, I, I know that story of Jonah and the whale. Oh, I know the story of feeding. When you talk about something familiar, oh, people will just shut down and then have a white noise and I look at you and pretending they're listening to you. And sometimes when you talk about something unfamiliar, because the people, they don't know about it. So today I'm going to talk to you something about very unfamiliar so most of the time you skip that reading Matthew chapter 1 and said begot this, begot that, the father of this the father of that, the father of this, the father of that and all of those names usually when you watch a movie they put the credits after this, the movie right do you stay to watch the credits right you don't care about the credits but here in the family tree of Jesus the credits is number one it's in the first chapter because let me explain to you there are four gospels everybody read i think i could teach some theology today everybody say matthew mark luke john, matthew, mark, luke, john. come on read it say it again matthew mark luke john matthew, mark, luke. Uh, the gospel according to matthew according to mark according to luke according to john so different writers telling story of jesus of course they have different style of presentation john He's trying to connect to the whole world about this Jesus Christ. That's why he said, John 3.16. Can we all re recite it? For God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes in Him would not but have. You notice that? John was trying to tell the whole world. Mark, who's Jewish, if you notice, Mark escape or skip the story of baby Jesus because Mark is a man of action. It's all about the action, boss. If you start read the book of Mark, Jesus already grown up. He's already doing miracles. Luke is a doctor. That's why if you want to investigate the scripture, read the gospel of Luke because it's very detailed. Matthew is a tax collector and try, trying to connect to the Jewish community that Jesus is the real Jewish Messiah. And here's the thing. In order to convince the Jewish nation that Jesus is the Messiah, Jewish people, you know what's very important to them? Their genealogy. Their heritage. 
we were there last week and our tour guide Ami was when he was introducing our, himself to us I am Ami I am a fourth generation from the tribe of Levi we are very proud about that I am a fourth generation from the tribe of Levi because that's how that's like that's the resume so Matthew chapter 1 is the resume of the family tree of Jesus I want you to look about this why this is very important look at the next slide why start with the genealogy here's the answer look at the next slide with me Matthew needed to answer the first question his Jewish leader readers would ask about Jesus what's the question was he come on read this that's very important was he in order for the Jewish people to be convinced that Jesus is the Messiah is he related to David if he's not related to David we're not even bothered to listen to that story you go to Israel today in the flag is not the star of Abraham it's not the star of Moses it's the star of David David was born in Bethlehem but he made Jerusalem the capital of Israel in the, in the heart of the city of Jerusalem, you see the city of David. They're very proud of this man, David, because God made a promise to David. This is the promise of God to David. Read this with me, Second Samuel. Very important, charisma. Your house, your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be what? Meaning from your line, from your house from your lineage from your genealogy there will be a kingdom that will endure forever your throne will be established forever and that is a reference to the messiah that jesus is the king of kings here's what matthew said resume number one of matthew everybody matthew verse one the genealogy of jesus christ the son of david the son did you notice that Matthew purposely said, hey guys, Jesus related to David and all the way to our father Abraham. That's his resume. He is the Messiah I've been waiting for. He's related to David, the son of David, the son of Abraham. It would be good if it stopped. But after that, he mentioned some names that are what? mentioned in the holy family this name these women are included i have good news for you today i hope you don't miss this tell the person next to you jesus loves the non-facebook version of you <laughs> come on say it come on come on say it i dare you to say it jesus loves the non-facebook how many of you have facebook or Instagram social media have you noticed you always hide something right you always put there something that is really oh my god so much people will like this will heart this right how many let me just ask you do you know how to take a selfie let me uh, to, 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 to help you out church the art of taking a selfie when you take a selfie you don't do this right why do you don't do this it will see the real you if you're what do you do and that's not enough why do you do this when you take a selfie <laughs> and how many pictures do you take one one thousand <laughs> do you post it at your profile right away no you have to go to your favorite filter and after you put your favorite filter that's not enough you put a hashtag I woke up like this <laughs> tell the person next to you Jesus loves you just as you are <laughs> amen the non Facebook version of you I'm gonna show you the family tree of Jesus if if there's a Facebook today this will not be put in the in the in the Matthew but this is the Bible there are some scandalous name I'm gonna mention 
that you thought not belong to the family, to holy family. Let's start it off. Let's go to the next slide with me, Charisma. Here's the number one. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez. Somebody said that's the first Hispanic in the Bible. Father of Perez. Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Who's Tamar? Everybody say Judah. So let's take a stroll down in memory lane. Jacob has 12 kids. And then one of the sons is Judah. When you are belong to a 12 family, a 12 siblings, there will be sibling rivalry. They hated Joseph because Joseph's favorite of the, of the dad. So what Judah said, why don't we kill this brother of ours? <laughs> Imagine how sweet, right? <laughs> the brother wanted to kill the brother. And then they changed the mind. Okay, don't kill him. Just sell him to the Egyptian. So we'll make money. The first human trafficking happened in the Bible. And Judah had the family. His two sons died. Now, in the Jewish community, listen to me carefully. If you're a widow, a woman, and your husband died, the brother of that husband you will marry. That's just part of their custom. So two brothers died. So there's this one youngest guy. His name is Shela, S-H-E-L-A-S. So Judah promised Tamar, I don't want you to be widow forever. Why is it hard to be a widow back in the day? If you're a widow, there's no SSS program. There's no welfare. It means no one will support you. That's why you need to have a husband, a kinsman redeemer, somebody who will provide for you. Don't. Tamar knew his father-in-law could not be trusted. So one day, Tamar pretended to be a prostitute. Let's just pretend this girl. How many of you recognize this? Is it Elsa? Tamar. One day, dressed up like a huchimama. And then, that's in the Bible, Charisma. I want you to read this with me. Let's look at the next slide. Can we show it on the screen? About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law, Tamar, has sold the use of her body. She's going to have a baby by this sinful thing. And Judah said, bring her out and let her be. I want you to say this with anger. One, two, three. Bring her out. Come on, let's shout it out. One, two, three. For the last time. So the father-in-law was mad because Tamar was pregnant and not with her son. But what happened, one day, Judah went to the brothel, to the brothel, and had a one-night stand with a prostitute. And she asked, what's your price? And the woman said, one goat. You, you don't, don't travel with a goat in your wallet, right? <laughs> I don't have a goat. I cannot pay you. But I have my ring. Ring is like your credit card. And my staff. And so the woman agreed, okay, give me your ring and your staff. And then send me the goat afterward. After that, three months later, Tamar was pregnant. In the Old Testament, if you are caught in adultery, you will be burned alive. And that is this picture. Look at this picture. So there's Tamar in the middle, and the burning fire is already there. And then Tamar said, wait, 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 wait. Before you burn me, let me tell you who made me pregnant. The one who owns this ring and the staff. That's the one who made me pregnant. And they all look at Judah. And I would just say Judah was there. And oh, wait, 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 wait. I did not say burn her. I say learn from her. S spare her. Let her go. Let her go. I don't want to judge her anymore. And look what happened. Church, let's read this together. Look at the next slide, please. Secrets cause us to be judgmental and prideful. Often, one who lies leads more to. Who was the most judgmental person? The father-in-law. Who was the guilty of sin? The father-in-law. 
You know, sometimes the judgmental people are the ones so guilty of the same sin that they're judging. That's just a life lesson. And look what happened next. This is the change of heart of Judah. Everybody read together. Judah recognized them and said, she's more righteous than I, since I wouldn't give her to my son Shela, And he did not sleep with her again. So the lady who got impregnated by the father-in-law did not have a husband anymore and then got pregnant with twins. We will see the lineage. So let's put here this lady. He, she is part of the holy family. What's the me message? God's grace is greater than my secrets. Would you please read this charisma? God's grace. All of us have secrets. All of us have skeletons in our closet. All of us have an episode or a chapter in your life that you want to delete, that you don't want even to Facebook or Instagram it because it's so scandalous. All of us have secrets like that. And this is the good news about Christmas. I could just hear the angels of the Lord shouting out, Hear ye! Hear ye! All of you have secrets. All of you have dark chapters in your life. Anybody, everybody who has regrets, deeply embarrassing moments, those of you who have inflicted hurt on others, those of you who made a big boo-boo of yourself. I have good news for you. It's Christmas. God's grace is greater than my secrets. Come on, somebody. God's grace is greater than my secrets. So what happened to Tamar? Got him pregnant and then both with two sons and along that lineage, here comes another woman mentioned in the Holy Family tree. Let's read this together. Matthew 1. It's so Matthew 1 5. Ram, the father of Minadab, the father of Nashon, Nashon, the father of Salmon, the father of. Everybody say Boaz. Boaz. The mother was. Whoa. Everybody say, that's from bad to worse. This lady pretends to be a prostitute. Rahab is the real deal. She's like Barbie dressing up like very provocative, right? She's the real prostitute. If, if Tamar pretended, this is a real one. This is a la lady of the night. Where do we find this Rahab? Let's all read this together, Charisma. It's in the book of Genesis, but before we show it on the screen, I just want you to ask you, do you have a label? For example, my coach Mark is called the giant killer. You go to his Instagram, Mark the giant killer, that's his label. My friend uh, uh, Asha, her label is Asha BG Super Beast, the Bulgarian Super Beast. Label, like Ray Russell Danger Russ, right? We have labels, some are good and some are not good, right? I want to put some names and I want you to help me out, okay? Let's squeeze ourselves if we know the... Uh, John the... John who? John the Baptist, you're good. What's the next one? Alexander the... Alexander who? Alexander the... Great. Let me help you out a little bit. A little bit hard. Attila the... Oh, wow. Attila the Han. This is really hard. Where, where you're thinking, Cap? Conan the? Oh, I like how you say it, right? Conan the Barbarian. Rahab the? <laughs> That's it. Rahab. In fact, it's worse. In the old King James word, they call it Rahab the Harlot. So please don't call anybody harlot, okay? But what happened to this harlot? When the children of God 
are entering the promised land. There is the wall of Jericho. And in the wall, along, along the walls of Jericho, those where the soldiers live and the prostitution houses. It's far away from the city, so it's connected to the foreigner and away from the locals. That's why the house of the prostitute abide by the wall. When the spies are entering the wall of Jericho, they hid in one of the houses of the prostitute. And so when Rahab knew these are soldiers of God, he said, I know your God is the real God. I know my city will be captured by you. Promise me, when you enter this city, spare my family. Because we know your God is the one true God. He's now believing in the God of Israel. And the spy said, when we return, the only way we could spare you from destruction, put a scarlet rope that's color red from the scripture. It's from your window so we could say, you are the one believer of us. Charisma, she belongs here. Behave, okay? She's part of the fam holy family. The pretended prostitute and the real prostitute. What's the good news about that, church? God's grace is greater than my labels. I don't know what label you're carrying today. Maybe you put it on yourself or put it by people. They call you accident. They call you addict. They call you bankrupt. They call you names. I don't know what names you're carrying today, but I have good news for you. God's grace is greater than my labels. You have a new label. I'm forgiven. Come on, somebody. I'm accepted. Come on, somebody. I am loved. Come on, somebody. I am under the grace of God. I'm under the blood. That's your new label nowadays. Come on, somebody. And then after Rahab, here's another woman. Oh, my gosh. Don't belong in the family tree of Jesus. Her name is, everybody say, Ruth. Everybody say, Ruth. Let's look at the, the slide. In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem, trace this down, Christmas, connected to Christmas. A man from Bethlehem, Elimelech, married to Naomi. Survival. You've been to Israel, it's desert. If there's no food, there's no way you could survive. You have to find some pasture. And the only place that that's available, there's food, is Moab. So Elimelech, together with Naomi and his two sons, migrated to Moab. Taking his wife and two sons with him. I want you to show the picture where is Israel today and Moab. The boundary is the Jordan River. It's just across the river and there's Moab. But here's the thing, Charisma. Do you know the number one hated enemy of Jewish people back in the day? Everybody say Moabite. Moabite. They hated the Moabite so badly. You know why? Let me explain you the background. When the children of Israel are uh, uh, coming out of Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea, right? They're marching toward the promised land. So Moses is an intelligent guy. The warriors be on front, the priest, and then the head of the family. The wives and their kids should be in the back. Just in case there's confrontation, you have the warriors in front. You know what the Moabite did? They let the Israelites pass by. And then attack from behind. In the rules of war, that is a no-no. They attack the wives and the kids. They slaughter them. And they're really so bad. They are the ones who hire prophet Balaam to curse Israel. Because of that, because of that, if you look in the book of Torah, the five books of the Bible, there is 
a promise regarding the Moabites. I want you to read this with me. Deuteronomy 23, verse 3. Everybody read together. No Ammonite or Moabite, any of their descendants for? Be what? The Philistines could go to the synagogue. The Canaanites could go to the synagogue. But the Moabites, out. You're left out. You're not admitted because of that. But now, let's find the scripture. Ruth 1, 3 and 4. Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left, what? With her two sons. They what? Oh my gosh. They married what? One name is? And the other is? That's scandalous. You married your enemy's family. But here's the grace of God. God chose a Moabite woman. How many of you are so thankful that God loves you regardless of the color of your skin? Come on, somebody. God loves you. It doesn't matter what, what status you are in. Because when, when, when the wives died, now they married the Moabite woman, and one of the women is Ruth. And I want you to see the picture of Orpah and Ruth. This is like this, charisma. Everybody say second harvest. Let me tell you the background. Back in the day, there's no social welfare. There's no SSS. No government will take care of you. If you're poor, here's the law. During harvest time, the farmers and the owners will, will be the first one to harvest. But there's a law. If you drop an apple, don't pick it up. If you drop a fruit, don't pick it up. That's for the poor people. That's the second harvest. So Ruth knew her standing. I don't belong to the harvest. I'm an outsider, but we have to survive. She was there gleaning and picking up fruits. And a boy saw her. Her name is Boaz. They fell in love. And you know, we always quote this in marriage. It's from Ruth. Because Ruth told her mother-in-law, I'm sick and tired of the Moabite belief. I know your God is the one true God. I will go with you to Israel. Because your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Let's read this charisma. We always quote this in, the, in marriage, everybody. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people. Wow. Your God. That's a change of faith of Moabite to the God of the Israel. The one true God. Because Ruth found favor in the sight of the kinsman redeemer. The name is Boaz. Oh, I'm praying for all the single ladies in the house. God has a Boaz for you. I pray you'll find that date. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. And let it stick. Let it stay. <laughs> You have a Boaz. Because the good news is this, church. God's grace is greater than my status. Everybody say this with me. God's grace. Her status says you cannot be admitted. Your status says you don't belong here. Your status says because of your nationality you're not welcome here but praise the Lord say this with me charisma God's grace is for every race say this church God's grace amen somebody do you think Jesus deserve a clap of praise for that come on somebody amen
I feel that I don't belong. I have a prison record. I don't have a perfect score. My credit score is out of whack. I don't have a 401k. All I have is 101k and it's not okay. It doesn't matter. God can elevate you. No matter how far, how down you've gone, God is up to something big in your life. He can lift you up like what He did to a poor Moabite woman by the name of Ruth. And you know what happened? As we all know, Ruth married to Boaz. And then do you know that Boaz is the great, 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 great father of David. So now we come closer now. But there's another close to David another woman mentioned in the Bible. So, let's just pretend Moana is the Moabite. But there's the last girl. Her name is Bathsheba. Everybody say Bathsheba. What do we know about Bathsheba? We just studied the book of David. What's the, what do we know about David, Bathsheba? Girlfriend of David. <laughs> Girlfriend of David. <laughs> David had an affair with Bathsheba. Now, let, let me tell you this. Do you know her name was not mentioned in the book of Matthew? Because it's so scandalous. Because they protect David. Jewish people, they love David so much. But they cannot delete that from the account. It happened. You know what they said in Matthew? Look at this. Let's read this together. And Jesse, the father of King David, was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been what? You know how this did not mention the name? But we all know who's Uriah's wife. You know how scandalous is this? David married another man's wife. Our hero, King David, married another man's wife. Yes. It so happened one night, right? When David was looking at the, at the palace in Jerusalem and saw this woman taking a bath. That's why her name is Bathsheba. If she's taking a shower, she will be called Shower Sheba. <laughs> That's not in the Bible. I just added up. Huh? Yes. It belonged to the royal family, to the holy family. And out of that union, out of that lineage, comes this blessed baby that we celebrate this Christmas. Because this is what Christmas is all about, charisma. God's grace is greater than my worst sin. Come on, say it, charisma. God's grace is greater than my worst sin. That is a worst sin, marrying another husband's wife and killing the husband. Actually, it was David who, who called for the, the head of Uriah. But God still used him. And I stop here. And I saw these four women in the family tree of Jesus. But there's another woman. Who's the other woman? Everybody say who? Everybody say who? Mary, did you know? Did you know? As I was studying this, I counted this, the the. The, the details one by one. I don't want to make a mistake on all the names of the guys. The guys, guys the father's name, Portifu. There's only five women mentioned in the family tree of Jesus. Why not seven? Why not eight? Why not ten? I'm sure all those other dudes have married, but they highlighted five. And I asked my wife, because I want to point out something to, to my wife. Sharon, ask Siri. Siri, what's number five in the Bible? You know what's number five in the Bible? And this is what comes out. I want you to look at this. The meaning of numbers. 
the number five in the Bible. Let's read this charisma. Number five symbolizes God's grace, goodness, favor toward humans. Five is the number of grace multiplied by itself, which is 25. It's grace upon grace. When was Jesus born? December 25. That's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating grace, church. You know why Mary was chosen? It's not because royalty. No, she's poor. From a town of Nazareth. That's why some people said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of the hood? That's what they're saying back in the day. This is what Mary experienced. Everybody read this together. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Remember, I'm telling you, he's the five, the fifth woman. It symbolized grace. Five. When somebody greets you, you can tell the, the nationality of that person, right? If somebody tells you, ¿Qué pasa? Hispanic. Hola. Italian. <laughs> Grazie. That's Italian. Right? Uh, bon appetit. Uh, French. Right? How about Shalom? Hebrew, Jewish. Kamusta? Filipino. But this is the greeting of the angel. Only twice mentioned in the Bible. This is the greeting of the angel to Mary. Everybody read together. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are what? Mighty Say it, church. Mighty Shout it out, charisma. Mighty Mary was highly favored by God, chosen to be the mother of Jesus. Holy Spirit came into her. No physical sexual union with the husband. It was a virgin birth. It was highly favored. It was just the grace of God. Now, I have good news for you, charisma. Do you know the second time highly favored or wondrous grace, the same meaning in the Greek? You know who is referred to? Tell the person next to you, you're highly favored. Come on, say it to the person next to you. You're highly favored. Read this with me, Ephesians 1, 6, Charisma. Everybody read this together. We praise God for the what? The glorious grace has poured out on us who belong who belong to his dear son church the grace of god upon mary is also the grace upon your life come on somebody i don't care who be, who, who, who curse you who said something bad about you don't you worry about those curse in your death words the grace of god is more powerful than the curse of the enemy amen somebody when you belong to the dear son you are highly favored in jesus name you are highly favored in jesus name that's why I'm excited about this Christmas. So let me just review you. Five women. One who pretended to be a prostitute. Everybody say, God's grace is greater than my secret. And that is Tamar. One who is a prostitute. Everybody say, God's grace is greater than my labels. One who is left out, not allowed, not invited to the party because of her status. That's Ruth, the Moabite. What is that? God's grace is greater than my status. A lady who had an affair and produced a child. God's grace is greater than my worst sin because here's what i want you to know about the story of jesus god doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the called amen somebody these people were disqualified by society because of what they did but God called them. You know why? 
Do you remember Matthew chapter 1, the resume of Jesus Christ? This is his job description. Matthew 1, 21. Same chapter, church. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Church, our greatest need is salvation. If our greatest need is money, God would have sent us a banker. If our greatest need is entertainment, God will have sent us a comedian. But our greatest need is forgiveness of our sins. He sent us Jesus. You know what's the meaning of Jesus in the Hebrew, Yeshua? In English, Jehovah saves. What's the point, church? Why did I take the time, the hour of studying this, to preach this to you on this Christmas Sunday? Because these names are a reminder. These names are a reminder and an invitation. So if you say, that God cannot choose me anymore. I disqualify myself. God cannot choose me anymore. 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 You want, you're saying that? Let me do my sermon again. Remember Tamar. Remember Rahab. Remember Bathsheba. Remember this lady. God is making a point. God can use anybody. Come on, somebody. God can use don't bench yourself because of just one mistake that you did in your life. Don't disqualify. You're still in the team. You belong to God's family. Come on, somebody. And I will shout that from the top of my voice. I'm standing here before you, not because I am worthy, not because I deserve it. I'm only standing here because of five. Grace has been given to me in my life. I am highly favored because of Jesus. Amen. And here's the big idea of what's Christmas to me. Christmas is the story of God. Drawing near to those who have drawn away. This is not like Star Wars long time ago, far, far away from galaxy, beaming from the spaceship. How, how can you identify with that? He became like us. In the same way we enter into this world, a baby. You know what I notice about babies? Babies draws attention. Amen, somebody? We are celebrating miracle this season. I want you to look at this baby. Can we show it on the screen? This baby, baby Kyle, Kyle was born before Thanksgiving, lifeless. And for three weeks, Richard and Agnes will have to stay in the hospital. But praise the Lord, this baby is here with us today. This is, this is baby. I want you to show it on the screen. Come on, somebody. Look at the screen. This is our super boy. Richard, come here, Agnes. And when, when, when they attend in their candlelight services, I could tell the people went all the way to the nursing room. Oh, welcome, baby Cal. Have you noticed people are drawing near to this baby? And that thought comes to my mind. This is what Jesus meant when he became a baby. He wants people to be drawn to him. Amen, somebody. The shepherds are left out. Out in the field. The angel appeared to them, drawing them to this baby. The wise men came all the way from Persia. God drawn them all the way to Bethlehem because God doesn't want anyone to be left out. God invites all of you and me to experience this in a personal way. I'd like to ask Richard if you could come to the stage. Let's welcome Richard. He's going to share a short story of this miracle. And Agnes, come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Don't drop the baby. You can drop. <laughs> you can drop the mic, but not the baby. Uh, so we named. Uh, uh, he was born on November 26, 2019. Um, we named him Kalel because uh, it means the voice of God. But uh, I mean, to some comic fans, it's a uh, Clark Kent's real name which is, you know, Kal-El, uh, Superman. But the voice of God, it's ironic, though, because it's, uh, he, we didn't hear his voice when he came out. Uh, my wife, uh, we had a complication during birth, and he got stuck in the birthing canal, suffocated, and basically turned Avatar blue when he's out. Um, we didn't hear him cry. We didn't hear him, um, we didn't hear anything. And, and uh as soon as he came out, they, the doctors tried to resuscitate him for two minutes, which is uh, the longest 120 seconds of our lives. Uh, dead, imagine a, a room full of nurses, dead silent. All you can hear is, is them counting. Anyway, as soon as they, uh, the oxygen was stabilized, he was sent to uh, uh, ICU at Children's Hospital. And at the same time, Agnes, um, had fluid in her lungs, so she had to re be readmitted at, at Northwest Hospital. And at some point, we were going back, I was going back and forth between Northwest Hospital and Children's Hospital just to make sure they're both okay. And, um, it, you know, the doctors tried to do everything that they could, and, you know, put tubes in his lungs and, uh, you know, so he can breathe and nose, food, uh, food tubes, syringes. I mean, as parents, it, um, it's hard to see a, your young one being strapped to so many monitors and, you know, it comes to a point where you can only just look and observe, and, you know, you've done everything you could. Um, so me and Agnes, as soon as she got out, we were able, we were just kind of, we don't know what to do. We were just able, we were just kind of looking and observing. That's all we could do. And uh, sometimes... You know, I'm sure everybody can relate. You're in a situation where you've done everything you could, but all you can do is watch and observe. And, you know, at, this, at that point, we just prayed. And I want to thank Charisma. I want to take this time to thank Charisma and for, for uh, the people that prayed alongside with us um, and, and who, who stood by us, who, who gave us food, who, who you know, comforted us. Um, it meant a lot. Community means a lot church means a lot and and i have a personal experience now of why that's important um because of the prayers you know god is really good because because of the prayers and we we, we were down on our knees we're praying god uh intervened and uh MRIs came back negative. He was meant to have brain damage, brain injury from the lack of oxygen. Uh, but praise God, uh, you know, his MRI is clean, EEG's clean, uh, like a normal baby. And for the first time in several days, you know, we, when they took out the tube, we were able to, to hear him cry. It's the sweetest thing uh, uh, we've, we've heard. And, uh, you know, he makes sure these days that, that we know he's, he, has a, he has a voice, you know. Um, but he can breathe his own breath. That's, that, was the, that was the biggest uh, thing that we praise God with. And um, this is not a testimony about our faith. Because really, there were times that we were losing faith and we were losing hope. We're human. No, that's not, that's, I don't think it's a story about faith. It's a story about God's goodness. God's consistency, that God heals, he's Jehovah Rapha, he's shown himself as our savior, he showed himself as our, as our, um, our provider, Jehovah Jireh, this year he's shown our family that he is Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and what the enemies meant for evil, he really turned it for good, so we just want to give God all the glory and praise. Come on, let's give Jesus a clap of praise. Stand up on our feet today, Charisma. We are in the season of miracle. God is drawing near 
to those who have drawn away. Don't bend yourself. Don't disqualify yourself. Look at the family picture of Jesus Christ. That is his non-Facebook post. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is invited. It's because of grace. Let's just sing this song. Oh, come, let us adore him. Could somebody help me out?